Hello. That is the state of soybean harvest. Stinky. Belinda's having her baby today, you guys. One at a time. Edward, you tell me where you want me. Oh, gross. Look at that. Two holes. He didn't even buy you a drink, did he? No. Dry beans. We're making ourselves available to dry beans. <laughs> we did have to empty the combine that Mark took a little bit of a sample here, and then he's gonna see if they'll go. I guess a bunch of guys, maybe 20 minutes from us, are getting like 15% beans, but I don't, we don't think they got the rain on Sunday that we got. I think just north of us, they're, they're, they said their corn is drier than their beans. I think their beans are coming between 24 and 28% moisture. Hello. Flower guide. Oh shoot. Yeah. Don't go. That is the field we just took off soybeans, what, two weeks ago? Oh, it's been three weeks. Three weeks now. And I don't know if you guys can see, I'm gonna see if I can. a no-go today unfortunately so we are going to take these beans home uh, finish cleaning out the bottom of the dryer it's still got corn in it and he is gonna dry this little bit of beans that I've got in the buggy and we're gonna see how they dry at that moisture we're sitting in at around 20 now I think and if they dry half decent we're going to uh, rip this off tomorrow and dry them all Good morning, I am looking for Mark. We are cleaning out the bottom of the dryer. Just has a little bit of corn in it. And uh, I think we're gonna attempt to dry soybeans, but oh my goodness, you guys. It is so wet. I don't know. Do I need a mask? Yeah. How are we drying these beans? Carefully. For people. Carefully. For people interested. Because uh, this isn't something people want to do. You don't want to have to dry soybeans. No, you can. But you don't want to. You don't want to dry anything. But no. Low and slow. So we're only have a set point at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it's kind of guessing what the grain set point is to reach dry. So that's 120 is a set. Yeah. And this, so when the grain gets to there, that's what it thinks it's dry? That's my guess. That's your guess. The way our autoflow, the autoflow works is that a third of these beans would dump out and then the, these beans would slide down. Oh, okay. And that's kind of how you dry with this in autoflow. When you batch dry, it's just hard because the depth is all over the place. Right. So I'm kind of going to see what it takes temperature wise to get this little ring dry all the time up and pull a sample off it oh. and then we don't have enough beans to kind of do an auto flow right so we're just try I'm just trying to guess what it's going to take
Mother Nature has been one fickle little monster today. We've gone through a couple little drizzles and the sun has just nicely come out here and it's about three o'clock. We are gonna take these soybeans off. Anyway, I'm on wagon duty. There's not much to do. I'm literally taking wagons home and bringing empty wagons there because they all have to be painfully put through our dryer. It's supposed to rain all day tomorrow, so I'm assuming that's what Mark is probably gonna have to do all day is just babysit a dryer. That is the state of soybean harvest. Stinky. So we have a, uh, a good chunk of those soybeans started. They're still wet. I just dropped off all the other wagons. I've got to actually bail on these guys. I have a load of lambs that I have to, uh, have to ship tonight. So this will work good by the time I get back. They should be close to being done, I would imagine. And then I can come back, jump on the tractor and take, take these wagons home. So she's uh, go, go, go. They unloaded like a dream. Wow. This is the sales barn here. So it's just a little barn. So that's, that's the place. All right, I gotta get home and start running wagons again, but uh, sometimes it's nice to decompress after a mentally taxing time. Trailering my sheep has been one of those things I used to be very anxious about it. Now I really enjoy it when the weather's good. Um, just as a time to decompress. It's an hour and a half of literally just like throw on a podcast or some tunes and shut my brain off, which uh, needed to happen today. Good morning. I'm sitting with Mark in the office. We are finished soybeans, which is good. It was a slug, and you're gonna be drying beans all day, probably? Well, yeah. Once, once it stops I raining. I ship a load of corn out, so I can't tie up that until you until do that. I ship it. So. so what he's been doing for the last hour or so is working on uh, what we call plan B. So I'm gonna show you Mark's spreadsheet of how he organizes all our crop rotations and how changing one year because of the weather affects like the next next year for sure and it takes like two years to get back into yeah back into there's normal options where you can either make it happen in one year mm -hmm. and you kind of got to eat it mm -hmm. or you can do it over a couple years and i'm kind of at a point where I'm just going to rip the band-aid off and fix it next year and then we'll be back on track hopefully for 23 and 24. He lives on spreadsheets so I'll show you his uh, crop rotation. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2, 3 and right up to 4. So he's got his varieties, he's got uh, the actual farm names and here's your total acres of stuff down here. So. Uh, because we have to switch stuff this year, 
this is looking not as balanced as we like it. And it's really taken us almost out to here for more normalcy. So anyway, thank you Mother Nature. Today is also a very big day. I was in the house for a couple hours this morning. I have uh, my big launch today on my new merch. So this is my goat hoodie. Oh, goodness. Anyway, today is our big launch day. So that's at noon. So I kind of wanted to just make sure I had some logistics figured out and I had everything scheduled. And uh, I'm always really nervous on launch day. I am very comfortable doing this with you guys almost every day, but uh, to sell a product, I just, I'm always like, are they gonna like it? Is it the right thing? And do they like the quality? I'm always like, I overthink everything. That's my little launch, but there's a bigger launch today and I'm so excited. I can't wait to share it if she lets me. Belinda's having her baby today, you guys. So she's uh, on the way to the hospital right now to get induced. I've had like butterflies all morning for her and I just, I, it takes me right back to when I was in labor with Jack and not knowing, is that labor, is that this? And she's so calm and cool, which is great because I honestly think the baby can sense that and then uh, hopefully her labor goes okay. So I'm gonna be thinking about that all day, I'm not gonna lie, and I will keep you guys posted as I'm posted. I have to get this wool down to the States and uh, I wanna go through it and pick out, I wanna keep some for myself for gifts and stuff for Christmas. So I'm gonna take a few seconds this morning and do that and then organize the rest of the boxes for shipping, which sucks, it's all like nicely wrapped. Freckles, you got some smearing going on. What's going on with you, little lady? Huh? I slipped in yesterday to uh, check on the status of this breeding. Most of them were laying down. <laughs> so I think day one wore them out or the ladies just weren't feeling it yesterday. There's red all over. <laughs> smeared, smeared. What about you, Billy's mom? I see some red up here. Pretty sure we didn't paint you there. You got a couple redheads chasing you. Edward, hey. One at a time. Edward, sorry, Billy's mama. One at a time, you big stud. <laughs> You're a big stud. See that chest? Wow. What about you, Lucky? You got everything under control over there? There is one U straight across there that has what looks to be a caseous a pus like infection which is weird, they've all been vaccinated for their caseus. So that's, it's either that or she's just got an infection there. So it looks to have already popped, but I may, if I get time today, I have a conference call in about 15 minutes. I may, if I have time today, just tie her up and clean out that, uh, drain it and clean it out. Cause it looks kind of nasty. Morning you guys, uh, sorry I didn't get back to you yesterday. Uh, the day just kind of got away from me. I had to take wool to the UPS store, which took a long time. I need to vaccinate my ewes that are due in December. I wanted to do that as well as hoof trim, uh, but Carissa isn't here this afternoon. So I think I'm gonna hold off on that. Um, update on Belinda, uh, that poor girl has been, she got admitted 24 hours ago and there's still no baby. It's been a really rough night. So I'm like my, I feel like there's an elephant on my chest this morning cause I'm just, I'm so, I'm not worried cause I know she's in good hands, but it's been a really hard night for her. Anyways. Uh, lots of prayers going out for her this morning. And hopefully by the time you guys see this, there will be a little Belinda baby out in the world. It's nice having my fridge here in the office now because some of these uh, vaccines need 
refrigerated. So on any used that are born 2018, 2019 and younger, we give the Glam back and uh, all the older ones still get the Taz backs. So that's what Carissa and I are gonna just work away at this morning, partly because it needs done and partly because I need to not think about Belinda. What are you doing? Let's go. Go. So okay. I am letting Carissa actually do this. I'm just letting her get more practice at the vaccinating. So we are running the ewe lambs first. So uh, these are the first time ewe lambs. They were born last September. Uh, so Bella's in this group and she looks great. We're gonna do, they will, so they'll all be getting glam back, yeah. which is nice. Uh, so we're giving them the glam back, which is the CL uh, plus the Clostridial mm. protection. And uh, this is their booster shot. They'll get this every year before they lamb. But the next group will have to work a bit harder in the scanning to make sure we get the right ones. I'm gonna be Chris on this one and push the sheep for her and she's gonna do the management. You tell me where you want me. got uh, a little tiny bit of peroxide. I've been mixing this with warm water. Uh, I've got my gloves. I've got a little tiny little knife. If it doesn't come out with the needle, I might just take the knife and I'll use my hook and halter and see what I can do. All right, so I have the paper towel just so none of it goes where it's not supposed to go. But we're just gonna squeeze out what I can. It's pretty much Don't want it to go everywhere. It's starting to scab. Look at that hole. It's huge. I didn't do that, by the way. That was there. I feel like that. I can't believe that would be Caseyus that would do that, but definitely did not need to use a needle or the uh, surgical knife. There is actually another hole here. It blew right through. Oh, gross. Look at that. Two holes. Do you see that? Yeah. Oh, I've never. Oh. Which is actually maybe good because it's maybe allowed it to drain from underneath. She's not fighting. It must feel pretty good. Empty. So I will give her. I don't like the looks of it because it looks dirty. So I might clean it out, give her some penicillin. Just so she doesn't get infected because those are gaping holes. might just flush that now. So this is just water for now, warm water, to clean it out. It's just going right through, eh? Which is probably okay. Cinnamon, go! Oh, oh that's my leg. Cinnamon, run along. Little tiny bit still. 
I cannot believe the gaping hole. And it was almost starting a third one here, see? Yeah. It's just wide open to infection. I don't like that at all. I don't know how she was Cinnamon, out. Oh, there we go. That pushed some more out. See that still coming out? I like it that enough, no more of those chunks are coming out. Look, I can't even squish it around because there's it's it's open on both ends. But there's not anything else coming out. So I think we got it cleaned out. Okay. Give you an antibiotic. That you lamb was vaccinated for with Glanvac. Uh, she would have had her first two initial doses when she was 12 weeks old and the second one when she was 16 weeks old, which would have been probably last November or so. So she would, she would have been up due here for a booster in a month or so. So it's not like she didn't have the protection uh, if it is CL. So that's what bothers me. I'm like, are there, and maybe people that are using Glamvac can answer me in the comments, are there breakthrough cases of CL? Um, I know it just offers protect protection, but I'm wondering if you do get some breakthrough. I haven't seen any that since I've started vaccinating uh, these ewes in 2019, I've yet to see any in that age group uh, have that sort of an abscess. So that's what's, it's gotten me thinking, is it that? It's just coincidental that it's in the exact same spot as all the CL I've ever seen. It does have me a bit, uh, just a bit concerned if we are having breakthrough cases now, or maybe she was up for renewal, if you know what I'm saying, because the booster is right around now. I don't know. I'll have to text my vet and see if that's the case, if, if it is 100% protection or if it's just, you know, kind of one of those things you can have some breakthrough cases. Oh, look who it is. What are you saying, big mama? <laughs> Seems to be a popular girl in town here. Let's say you. One, two, three, four, five boys behind you. He didn't even buy you a drink, did he? No. You probably got to pick up the check, too. I think you should dump them, all of them. They're no good. You're too good for them. Yeah, look at them. They're already swiping right or left. Oh, my God. 